Welcome to SBG TV News for Tuesday, August 16, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has recorded an 87.10% overall pass rate in the 2016 Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination SCAPE, a slight decrease from the 2015 average of 89.42%. A total of 591 candidates sat the examinations this year. 526 of which were students from the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College, and the remaining 65 being private candidates. Examinations were sat across 20 different subject areas, including, for the first time, Applied Mathematics Unit 1. For 2016, a total 1,744 examinations were sat, with passing grades of 1 obtained in 1,519 of these sittings. Ten subject areas received 100% pass mark. These include Caribbean Studies Unit 1, Computer Science Unit 2, Environmental Science Unit 1, French Unit 1 and 2, Geography Unit 1, Literatures of English Unit 2, Physical Education Unit 1 and 2, and Pure Mathematics Unit 2. A release from the Ministry of Education says the overall results show that high pass rates were maintained in most subjects taken. Former Attorney General and Queen's Counsel Panel Campbell continues to maintain that the Cybercrime Bill is a useful piece of legislation for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which would put an end to malicious intentions. Campbell, who was speaking on his weekly Monday night program, The Law and You, on SVG TV, said, though the opposition has made attempts to discredit his over 40 years of law experience, as it relates to his position on the new legislation, he does not see it offending the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am making the statement right here and now, as I did last week, that in my opinion, the Cyber Crimes Act 2016 does not offend the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Whether I am right or wrong remains to be seen. But in my respectful opinion, the act passed in Parliament on Friday last week does not offend the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But it is only if the act is challenged after it comes into force and it goes to court that we will know for sure. But for the time being, I am telling you that based on all the law that I know, that act, the Cyber Crimes Act, will be found not to have offended the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The veteran lawyer also praised the presentation made in Parliament by Minister of Sustainable Development, Camilla Gonzalez, describing it as masterful. He says that while there were changes made to the Act, it is now even better than before. Reading the bill with the changes proposed in the Select Committee, it is even a better bill than the original. And I listened to much of what was said for the bill and against the bill. Now that it has been passed into an act, it will go on the law books and it will be open to persons to challenge that act. But let me say that in order to challenge that act, you would first have to contrive to get yourself arrested and charged. And when you are taken to court, then you can object to the act on whatever basis you feel you want to object on. But in our system, you can't just go and say, tell the court, I object to a certain act. The court doesn't act that way. The court responds to a person who, having been charged, complains that something is wrong with the bill. And the only complaint you can really make against a bill is that you can allege that it is unconstitutional. The Queen's Council says that while there are claims that the Cybercrime Act interferes with freedom of speech, there are several sections in the Constitution which have heavy penalties for such offences. 
and I will read them very rapidly. Section 38 High treason for people who levy war against St. Vincent the Grenadines or does any act preparatory thereto. The penalty is death. Section 39. Treasonous words carry a penalty of life imprisonment. Section 46. Incitement to mutiny carries a penalty of life imprisonment. Section 53.1c. Uttering seditious words carry a penalty of five years. Section 60. Unlawful oaths carry a penalty of life imprisonment. Section 61, unlawful oaths to commit offenses other than capital offenses, a penalty of seven years. Section 64, with which I have dealt with, publication of false news likely to cause fear or alarm, a penalty of one year. Leader of the Democratic Republican Party, the DRP, Anicia Batiste, is questioning the motives of panel Campbell QC as he made a pronouncement that the cybercrime bill was good without the amendments. But he's told SVG TV News earlier today that there are conflicting statements on the Cybercrime Act when in another instance, the Prime Minister himself stated that the bill, then bill, had received some warranted amendments. One has to really ask the question if Mr. Campbell's pronouncement could be trusted. And this is why I say this. In his previous program, before the bill was debated and passed in the Parliament, he, he indicated that he had only seen the original bill. He hadn't seen any revisions. And yet he concluded in that program that he didn't see anything wrong with it. Furthermore, the Prime Minister, in his debate in Parliament on August, the, 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 I believe it was the debate on the 11th and perhaps repeated on the 12th, he too pointed to the QC statement as not having seen anything wrong with the bill, yet he pointed out the fact that he decided re revisions needed to be made. So who do we trust? The QC who was saying nothing was wrong with it before the revisions, or the Prime Minister who said he still needed to make re revisions after? So when Mr. Campbell says that the bill that was revised is even better, what do we really trust, that nothing was wrong with it before the revisions, or that it is better after the revisions? He needs to decide which position he's holding. Batista, who holds a degree in law, believes that Canberra is misrepresenting the main concerns raised by persons, that of the penalty for libel, which she said should not be a criminal offence. The issue is that people are speaking as if there is no redress for libel. They're behaving as if... People redress for maliciousness in terms of people publishing libels that could be def that are defamatory of others. This is not true. We already have civil law in the country through which a person can seek. We have a civil court where they can seek redress for, for libel that is published against them, and they can receive compensation in the form of money for libelous uh, publications against them. What we are arguing and what we are saying is that the punishment for libel should not be a criminal one, where a person can get a criminal record and even go to prison for libel. We do not believe it is quid pro quo or so much for so much in terms of the punishment meeting the crime or the punishment meeting the wrong. We believe that civil remedies suffice for the wrong or the tort, as they said in law, of libel. 22 organizations have signed a joint statement expressing their disappointment over the passing of this country's Cybercrime Bill 2016. The organizations which state that they are defending freedom of the press and access to information says that they are deeply concerned by the cybercrime law adopted in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They claim that several provisions of this bill pose a serious threat to freedom of the press, the free flow of online information and public debate. They also explained that the defamation in print, written and broadcast media is punishable by up to two years imprisonment on the St. Vincent's Penal Code, which predates the adoption of the cybercrime law, but that the new legislation extends criminal defamation to online content. The 22 foreign entities also noted their concern 
that the broadening of criminal defamation to include online expression, which they say is wrongly vague. The statement issued also pointed out that the steps taken in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to strengthen criminal defamation laws and stifle online dissent and discussion could reverse the positive legislative trend in the Caribbean and serve as a negative example for St. Vincent's regional neighbors. They also made a strong appeal for the law to be revised and for criminal defamation to be abolished. And the leader of the Democratic Republic Party, Anicia Batiste, who has been a vocal critic of the cybercrime bill, says she is concerned that SVG now has an image of stifling free speech with the adoption of the new legislation. But he said, despite an outcry by several of these international agencies, the government went ahead and showed that they were unconcerned with the views of the nation's citizens. It is indicative of the fact that, how, of how the world views our position, and it is truly unfortunate because these things were being addressed before locally, but the government did not listen, and now we have these international organizations basically condemning us for having done that, for having taken that position as a country. This is not good enough. It is not good for our image as a modern, supposedly democratic society. A lone mask gunman reportedly escaped with an undisclosed sum of money, leaving one person nursing a gunshot wound to the leg. A report from a police officer says the victim, Stan Pope of Lomans Winworth, a driver of a high-run truck owned by the St. Vincent Brewery Limited, along with two conductors, were traveling from Chateaubelair to Kingstown at around 2.15 p.m. when it stopped in front of a shop in the Pity Bordel area. The two conductors reportedly exited the truck and entered the shop when a lone gunman approached the driver on the outside and fired one shot, injuring him in the right leg and escaped with a bag containing an undisclosed sum of money. Villagers say the gunman fled the scene in a rental vehicle. The matter is on the investigation. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the United Arab Emirates will sign on Friday an Air Services Agreement, the ASA. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez will sign on behalf of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, while His Excellency Saif Mohammed Al Suwadi, Director General, Civil Aviation, General Civil Aviation Authority, and Ms. Valerie Brown, Air Transport Agreements Chief Specialist, Air Transport Department, Strategy and International Affairs, General Civil Aviation Authority will sign on behalf of the UAE. The Air Services Agreement relates to the Convention on International Civil Aviation, which came into operation at the 1944 Chicago Convention for the purposes of establishing and operating air services between and beyond member states. Each contracting party grants the other the rights specified in this agreement to enable its designated airline to establish and operate agreed services. Under this agreement, there is a guaranteed right to fly across the territory of the other contracting party for the purposes of taking on or discharging international traffic in passengers, baggage and cargo. The ceremony for the final signature of the ASA between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the UAE will take place on Friday, August 19th at 2 p.m. at Cabinet Room. An appeal has been made for Vincentians to be more observant and protective of their natural environment. This appeal was made at a whale watching workshop hosted earlier today by the SVG National Trust. The workshop saw participation of stakeholders from the fisheries department as well as those in the whaling industry. Trustee of the SVG National Trust, Louise Mitchell Joseph, told the participants that visitors to the islands are trying to escape the problems of the outside world and that she is hopeful opportunities will be created to display more of SVG's beauty through whale watching. The visitors that come to our shores are escaping all of that. They're coming to a peaceful place on the planet, a place that still has its natural beauty intact. When they come here, they often come with a lot of stress on their shoulders. And it is my view that the best experience that we can offer these visitors is by bringing them into contact with nature. Because when one comes into contact with nature, one can reconnect with oneself. 
one can get to know oneself better and one can leave all of your troubles behind. It is my hope that this workshop will teach us to appreciate our nature more, both for our own benefits, as well as to show it as a tourism product. Miguel Eniguez, representative of Fundacion Citas, said his organization has been working throughout Latin America, promoting responsible whale watching, and was happy to get the opportunity to share his knowledge and experience with locals on the lucrative industry. So we, we uh, were uh, working with the coastal communities. We, as I said, we just work on whale watching and we, the idea is to share experience. In the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, I would like to emphasize that this workshop uh, will uh, show you our experience on whale watching and we are not planning to, uh, to talk about other uh, the use of whales and dolphins because firstly because uh, in Fundacion Cetus we are very respectful for your culture so our this is the reason why we are focused here to talk on, on whale watching. Also making remarks was Chief Agricultural Officer Ashley Kane who stated that whale watching has the potential to create livelihoods for a number of persons in SVG. I therefore want to ask the question, has the time now come, given global interest in whaling, for us to take a fresh guard, a new guard, in our whaling industry? The idea for the fresh guard to me is especially appealing, since it suggests due care and attention be paid to safeguarding and maintaining that which is to be held by us in care and trust for the next generation. And what I am sensing is that this new guard is not necessarily about the eating of whales, but more about the opportunity to earn bread sustainably from the effective management of our whaling heritage. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College will tomorrow hold an open day for its new Agriculture Science and Entrepreneurship Associate program. The program, which was launched in September 2015, replaces the old Agricultural Science program and aims to build student capacity in both agriculture and business. <coughs> Beg your pardon. The open day, which will be held tomorrow at the Division of Technical and Vocational Education at Arnesvale, begins at 10 a.m. It will sensitize students on the contents and benefits of the program, as well as information on applying to the institution, funding options, and displays from partners of the college. There will also be a panel discussion which will feature entrepreneurs in agriculture and agro-processing, so that students can get the feel of what they are getting into. Dean of the Division, Osborne Bowens, expressed his hope that students will take advantage of the information session and see this as a new way of becoming business owners in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He noted that when the college revised the program, it took into consideration the labor market needs of the country and the skills needed. The program's revision came through funding from the former Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development of Canada, now Global Affairs Canada, under the CARICOM Education for Employment program, and was administered by College and Institutes Canada, CCAN. The St. Vincent Brewery Limited is taking on a new look for its award-winning product, Hyrun Bear. At a media press conference today, Trade Marketing Coordinator Lamont Medica said the company saw it fit to bring a new look for the label as it has been over 20 years the bear has maintained the same appearance. He added, however, that the brewery operates with a mindset that the consumer is the boss and therefore, they should have the opportunity to choose the new look for the Hyrule Bear label. Now, we have four different labels that will be in newspapers, you see them on billboards, you see them on social media, that persons can choose from. Now, the voting is very, very simple. There are three ways that you can vote to decide which will be the new label of Hyrule Bear. You could get a voting card at uh, all supermarkets, all the participating supermarkets where you'll see the Hyrule front cap gondolas. There'll be voting cards there and boxes where you could choose your label 
and drop it into the boxes to be counted. You could also visit our Instagram page or Facebook page and like your favorite label. Also, we'll be having different uh, label campaign events where persons will get a chance to vote for their favorite label. And at the end of each event, uh, the, the label with the most votes on that night, each person will win a prize. Medica says the promotion will run for a period of three weeks and will end on September 5th.